Hello everyone. Welcome to Bandis, the show where I take a look at a piece of art and make a stupid ridiculous argument as to why some stupid ridiculous people would think it'd be a good idea to either outright ban it or at least make some good choice cuts. Today, I was going to... I'm going to be looking at a film that initially I was going to wait to look at this until Easter. But then I figured, no, considering this is what I declared to be Human History Month, where I, you know, look at, you know, the best parts of our species, I decided to take a look at this very powerful film. I mean, for Easter, I've got a few other things, like I've got King of Kings, I've got some Veggie Tales, and, uh, Life of Brian, I can be looking at. I don't think I did a video on Life of Brian yet. I'll have to double check. But I don't think I did. Maybe I did. I don't know. But I got at least three things for Easter, so... I don't need to do this, so... Alright. <clears throat> now this film... does have a bit of a history of, you know, censorship or trying to be censored for uh, being perceived as a blasphemous, considering, you know, this is based on a novel, which this film tells you right off the bat that this isn't based off the Bible, it's based off of a novel, which of course is inspired by, you know, the New Testament. You know, it's a fictionalized version. So, <clears throat> like, uh, mainly, uh, the one, main, the biggest so, you know, there are a lot of liberties. For example, it's, uh, like there's one part where, well, just, ah, the, I'm not sure which parts I want to highlight the most or not, whatnot, but, um, I suppose I really think I should script things, but, ah, I'm on a tight enough schedule as it is. <laughs> so I just wing it. Anyways, like, uh, so in this film, Jesus isn't necessarily portrayed as exactly, like, totally, like, a divine being or anything, you know, like, you know, being a son of God. Depending on how you can interpret it, it can just be seen that he's just kind of a delusional guy, although... I'm pretty sure we do see one or two miracles performed in this film, which, you know, most normal guys, whether they're delusional or not, aren't exactly going to be able to do very easily. And, uh, <clears throat> so I yes, said it's really focusing on the human aspect of Jesus Christ. So I'll be getting to that a little bit when I talk about what I actually think of this film. And uh, some other scenes. Well, the, the biggest controversy would be uh, referring to the title of the film, The Last Temptation, where, you know, Jesus, you know, has these visions, you know, of what if he didn't go through it? What if he decided not to go on the cross, not to fulfill the prophecy, and he, you know, would live a normal life, you know, have a family, which would in turn require having sex. And it was mainly that, that thing that, you know, got me, you know, Mostly, you know, the Catholics. Like, oh, what group was that? Oh. It's like a group, you know, uh, they, you know, 
look at movies and art, you know, kind of like a... You know, sort of like, you know, what common sense media would do, you know, of look at, you know, of looking at films at from a uh, extremely, like, fundamentalist Christian aspect. So it's these kind of things that got them ticked off. Like, uh, another part is uh, Jesus, you know, he's begging Judas to make sure that, you know, I want you to betray me because I want to make sure that this whole thing goes through. So, but let me talk about what I actually think about this film. This, this would make a great double feature if you have the time. This thing is, this movie itself is like three hours, so, you know, gonna have a six-hour marathon or whatever. But yeah, a great double feature with Passion of the Christ, where Passion focuses on, you know, more of the physical pain. Here, it's the more human emotional pain. And like let's let's argue the fact that, you know, maybe Jesus here isn't portrayed as exactly, you know, Son of God, or they're just a human, just a guy. But does that? It's still a strong, powerful symbol. Just the idea, you know, he's putting them himself out there. He's. turning himself into, you know, a symbol, a scapegoat, you know? He didn't have to, but he did. Sometimes I should edit, too, but I'm on a tight enough schedule already. So, here I am making long, awkward pauses as I struggle to figure out what I want to say next. And when I decide what I want to say next, it's not what I want to say. But yeah. Just, you know, someone going up there, you know, even as a symbol, it's still a strong symbol. Whether or not he's the son of God, which, you know, us Christians, that's what we want to believe. But, you could almost argue even just the idea of, well, it's like martyrdom, you know? It's still... It's just powerful. That's... <laughs> All I can really say, it's, this is a really good movie. And I, you know, try to look past any of the controversy. Look at it for the testament of faith. And, you know, the hope-filled thing that this is. I highly recommend this. There might be some things that might, set, you know, rub people the wrong way, but it's still, in my opinion, a must-watch. Really focusing on the human aspect of Jesus Christ instead of, you know, merely on, you know, the divine Some, something that we don't think about too often, and it makes the sacrifice so much stronger. Well, that's about it for this one. Um, 
my I'm on mines, but shoot stardust link in the description below, although I hardly ever do anything with those. I really should. But yeah. I'll see you next time, so take care and God bless.